talk a little bit about the process that you followed for identifying those competencies? Um, so that that was basically I talked to you about the five division managers being part of that team. Really, a lot of it is um, what was their experience? What were they seeing that people had or didn't have? What were the gaps um, that that um, they could see that they felt were important <coughs> to address? So one of the reasons we said basic cool, like English. Now. And, and math skills, college level English and math skills, was because um, that was an area of concern. And, and also the civil service exam, like where did some people have a hard time like not passing exams? And it was um, math skills for, you know, in the case of the field supervisor positions. Um, so it was both looking at our, at our exam data and uh, getting input from the division managers. The other side was that my, my predecessor uh, actually worked with the senior management team to develop that leadership competency model. So you guys have that handout with the leadership competencies. She went and worked directly with the senior management team uh, to work with them to identify, identify what specific leadership competencies they wanted to, they felt like were the, the factors for success. Thanks. I'm not sure if I missed it and you said it, but what was, what's the success rate or what's the actual percentage of people who went to the academy that went on to take on a, a, a leadership position or were able to, to get promoted? Yeah, it was, it, for, the, for the most part, they're between 65 and 70 percent on the, on, on, the, on the ranges of, of uh, people that, that moved forward. Piggybacking on that question, so is there a perception among employees and your unions that the success of this program hinges upon your internal hires, you know, versus external hires? Is there that perception, and typically what is that percentage that, that you have at EV Uh I, I don't have a statistic for general the internal been, versus external. We, we, I don't know how much, you know, this is recent, but I know for many years it was around 65% or so internal hires. Mm -hmm. um, and um, of course, the union really prefers the internal hires, so they like this program. I didn't talk too much about the importance of bringing the union on early on to gain support, and certainly to not have people, you know, trying to work against the, the program. So that is important. And kind of looking at our entry level hires and how we kind of get them into, uh, again, knowing what the values are, knowing the technical skills, and then kind of moving up. So hopefully we can keep the, the the bubble at the levels where we have training programs existing to kind of cultivate people, and then the leadership aspect, we can kind of, again, if we can keep the leadership funnel strong, yeah. then we can build the, build everything up. So. Thank you. And you're, you're talking about your pipeline be with that external um, Agencies or well, our, our pipeline academy is actually our plumbers training. That, that, yeah, that's, it's that's the entry level plumbers training. So, so, when, so when you talk about like you know keeping that bubble at the entry level, mm -hmm. you're talking about having those partnerships with outside organizations or schools or yes. whatnot. Yeah. So our our EEO unit and our recruitment unit uh, do do outreaches specifically with partner agencies around again to to, to fill those those positions. So. Um, so then you get you know, one-stop systems and other things that you can kind of connect to to fill those. So you have enough, there's enough community support to help with those things if we can keep the, keep the other positions. Every program has a counter exchange of goals. Have you observed um, differing customer service uh, qualities from these uh, graduate groups that have reduced the workload on both of your ends? And so, uh, are they uh, administrative route related, or um, are they safety related, or uh, what category would those be in? Um, sorry, that's, sorry. A, that's a good question. Um, twofold, I, th I think, when it, when it comes to the, the, the customer service end, um, we, we, we try to build from our new employee orientation to other things to, to build that that layer of training into the systems. When when it comes to how the, how the teams are actually doing customer service out um, you know out on sites, um, uh, our customer service department does work with them. And I just we just actually were asked to uh, assist another group 
uh, our meter readers with doing some soft skills training with them around that. So, so right. coming up, we'll have more. We'll be we will be ramping up and have to have to do more training directly with those groups. Um, even with even with the, the academies, we'll still have to support that. And like Maria said, one of the things Maria has been excellent at is once academy groups, once academy graduates move into positions, is they will call back and, and really request support uh, directly from our group to help uh, to help with that kind of that kind of work. So it does kind of create a bigger workload for us, but um, but again, it, it, as long as we can continue to to build systems that, that help everybody, you know, that's that's the best thing for us is to keep building systems that we can push back to the managers and help them. Yeah. Thanks. So, so you mentioned that your process is competitive, so people apply, they respond to some of the questions. Um, let's say you hire people that have not gone to the academy, and they say they're, from, they're in supervisory or management positions, and they're still required to go to this training, correct? Is that that mass training? Yes, okay. they go to the mass So what training. happens if they don't go? Well, let's say they show up for one or two sessions, do you... Is it mandatory? It, it, it is mandatory, although it's up to their manager to to monitor that. Okay. Uh, whether and we report back to the managers um, if people haven't, you know, let them know um, that they haven't taken these classes. So you know, we let the manager hold them accountable. So the manager holds them accountable, but you do make it mandatory. Yeah. The, okay. the mandatory that they take. Um, the mass courses in the first two years. In the first two years. Yeah. Do you find you get a lot of talent coming in from other agencies, or any of your talent leaving to go to other agencies? Um, in what I've been talking about, the leadership academies, it's a program for employees. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, we're working with people who have been at the district for a while. We have lost, like I, I mentioned, Pathways. We we lost two of our participants to other agencies. Uh, so sometimes that happens. When we had Management Leadership Academy, we lost some of those uh, participants to other agencies. It does happen. Do you find very many people taking it at the end of their career, like right before they're retiring? or? Do you set up limits on that? Or? No, we don't set up limits, but um, no, that hasn't been our experience that people are taking this at the end of the career. No, that people are taking this because their intention is to stay at the district and they want to continue to move up and be more effective. Oh. Do you do any follow up subsequent to these academies as to how they're doing in the performance, uh, do a refresher? Do you do anything like that? Um, we don't do the follow-up on performance. Um, we do offer special training uh, classes. We've offered ongoing training where we'll invite uh, academy graduates to the training. And so it's an opportunity for them, you know, for a broader group of graduates to come to training classes and continue to have that sense of being an alumni of the academy and that it's special. So um, we've also offered, you know, special additional training classes that are just open for to alumni. Thank you. And how are we doing on time? Are we? We, we are out of time. Okay. So uh, to two things, what what Maria was going to present is uh, part of the part of this is again once you again within the scope of succession. Once you have people that are promoting through programs, this, the next question is how do you support new leaders once they're in position? And Maria, again, Maria has a, a, a new a new leader orientation that she's done with new managers uh, when they division uh, managers and above. Is yeah, the focus. So we have that. So when you when you get access to the powerpoints, the powerpoints will be actually be on the, on the Bankwork website. So if you want to get that, there is some information specifically about that as well in the program. And then some final a couple slides about evaluation as well.